Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Scenes by Joy. So, we have officially made it to day 13! You guys, I'm so proud of me. Like, I'm so proud of me because I'm just proud of myself. Like, day 13 to record, edit, post 13 videos this far, like... I'm really trying to get to 25, guys. I'm really trying to get to 25. If I don't get to 25, I mean, I'm not even going to be upset about it. I'm really not even going to be upset about it because the fact that I made it this far, I'm just, I'm turning up, you guys. Yes. But let's get into um, today's episode. So what I really want to, wanted to discuss today is work-life balance. To me, it is essential. So if you watched my last video, you heard me ranting about finances and just inflation and everything like that and how I'm juggling all these jobs and what I'm trying to do with my business, what I'm trying to do with gaining more knowledge in the media industry field. But although I work hard, I had to teach myself work-life balance because sometimes I get so caught up in just getting everything done that I don't take care of Joyce or I get so wrapped up in taking care of Joyce that I'm not getting anything done. So today I'm going to explain my four main tips on how I manage work-life balance. So let's go. First things first, I always keep planners with me, whether I buy them, whether they're provided to me by my job or I just make them. So I'm going to show you all my main three planners that I live by. So, this really isn't a planner per se, it's a journal, but I have had this journal since like 2018, you guys. Like one of my students when I taught first grade bought me this and I used to put my grad school homework in here. I used to do my finances in here. I'll still do my finances in this book and just watch how, you know, my bills have increased over time just to see what I pay month to month to month where I can cut back all that, just my goals, my plans, my business strategies. Like this book has been with me for so many years, has traveled to so many apartments, so many cities, and I carry it with me to work every single day because I have to always strategize. I have to always do finances. I have to always write down goals. I have to always have a plan, you guys. I am an obsessive planner so this this is one of my OD journals another planner that I have is provided to me from my job and I have it tabbed off month by month and in here all the responsibilities that I have at work I write in this journal like I do teach two subjects I told you I teach English 3 and I teach journalism so between picture days assignments deadlines when progress reports, when report cards, grades, anything, and also my internship, things I have to do for that, I put inside this planner. So I know that if it's anything work-related, if somebody wants to hang out on a weekday, I know that I can go to this journal, and that's how I kind of balance out what I have to do at work and make it time for my personal life. So this finance goals journal, okay? That's what this is for. This planner that I just showed y'all that I got from my job, this is, you know, work life. This makes sure I'm staying on track and that I can get everything done within my nine to five hours. And if I want to do something for me, I just need to look at my calendar, make sure that I'm not doing anything major for work and bada boom. Then I have this planner, which I made this myself, you guys. It's just... It's just a planner where I just have business goals, I have photography hacks, I have videography hacks, I have my to-do list for my internship. So sometimes it get a little crazy in there with my main job. So I do put my internship to-dos in here. And then at the back, I just have like additional notes, experience, because I am trying to switch locations, I am trying to switch careers. So things that I do at my job that I'm just not thinking of that 
this is a good way to market myself. These are great skills that could be towards another job. I just jot them down inside of this journal at the back. So I have that when I'm updating my resume. So this is how I balance out like adulting, working goals, things like that. And making sure that I am making time for myself. Because if I'm scheduled to work until 5, then I can squeeze in a happy hour at 6 to 7. You know? So I'm making sure that I'm not overworking myself and I can slide in some fun, fun time if that makes sense. Okay. My number two tip. Learn to say no. No is becoming one of my favorite words. I used to be that person where I would cringe when I felt like I was trying to build up the nerve to tell somebody no. I don't know why it bothered me so bad telling people no. I, I just didn't want to do it. And I had to learn that I am over you know, over spreading myself. I am over exhausting myself. And a lot of times that I would say yes, it was for things and for people who would not do the same for me. And that goes down to my job. That goes down to somebody asking me for favors. That's go down to somebody wanting me to, you know, just look out for them in some form of capacity. And I just had to tell them, no, I have to take care of me. I have to balance my life. I have to make sure that I am hitting my goals and I'm also getting my risk. And at my job, now, I understand some events I do have to attend because I teach journalism. We are responsible for the yearbook. But if if it's getting too over obsessive, like if it's three events in one week and y'all want me at every single event and then on top of that, you want me to edit pictures, post, no. You get one event a week, maybe an event during school hours, and that's it. If I say I'm not coming, I'm not coming. You better get one of the kids taking pictures. You better get somebody else to do it. Because y'all ain't gonna pay me extra for my time. I don't get paid overtime. And then people who are needy and always want favors and want you to do this and want you to do that and always picking your brain, like, where are you when I need somebody? Where are you when I'm going crazy and I need to find balance in my life? Where are you? You're adding more to my load because you're needing me to do this, 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 and this for you. I'm a busy woman. Okay. So learn to say no. That's my number two tip for that work-life balance. My number three tip, get some rest, you guys. Get some rest and pamper yourself. Now I will say I would just, you know, kind of overdo it with the sleep thing because I have suffered with depression and anxiety and I'll get into that in another video. So the way that I cope with it, I just sleep. I just would just sleep my life away. But you know, we're talking about balance, you guys, balance. I had to learn that I don't need to be on go 24 hours a day, but I also don't need to be sleep 24 hours a day. And as long as I find that balance, I can overcome you know, depression, I can overcome anxiety. I can overcome being so hard on myself. So please get some rest, go to sleep. Whatever don't get done in the 24 hours you're currently in, I promise you, I promise you that it can carry on to the next day and you will be fine. I had to teach myself that like, Joyce, if you can't get it all done today, it's okay, girl. Just make sure you get it done tomorrow. If you know that you tried your 100% best to get it in within this day, and you know, time just got away from you, get it done tomorrow and it will be totally okay. And when I say pamper yourself, treat yourself to a massage. Treat yourself to a $100 meal at a steakhouse. Treat yourself to a pedicure, to a manicure, getting your hair done. When you look good, you feel good. And when you take care of you, you will take care of you back. So, Work-life balance, make sure y'all are taking care of yourselves, okay? We have to be with ourselves for, it's a limited amount of time, but it's really a long time, okay? So, yes. And my fourth tip when it comes to work-life balance, I kind of mentioned it in tip three, but show yourself grace. So when I was saying like, if you can't get everything done on that day that you had planned to get everything done, you guys, it's okay. Just breathe and show yourself 
grace and I promise it's gonna be okay. We are not perfect. No one is perfect. Your favorite artist, your favorite athlete, your favorite musician, whoever you look up to, whoever you idolize, they are not perfect. And it has been plenty of times where they have had to show themselves grace, okay? Know that one defeat does not throw away the whole project. It do not throw away the whole goal. It does not throw away the whole purpose. Get some rest, show yourself grace, and know that it will be okay. The only thing you have to focus on is consistency. Just make sure you never stop. And I'm a firm believer that slow motion is better than no motion, okay? A healthy process is better than an unhealthy process because if you just run yourself into the ground and don't find that balance, you are going to experience burnout. And when you experience burnout, you're not gonna be good to yourself and nobody else, okay? So I just want to share my little work-life balance tips with you all. I'm so excited we made it to day 13. And honestly, that's how I have managed to make it to day 13. That's how I have managed to make it thus far, that work-life balance. Understanding that, okay, I may have to work on teaching on this day. I may have to work on my intern this day. I may have to work on YouTube this day. But when my days are dedicated to individual things, I have to just leave it at that. I cannot just stack, 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 or I'm going to be burnt out. In this holiday season, I don't wanna be in a grumpy mood around my family, around my friends. I wanna be refreshed, I wanna be energized, and then I also wanna bring energy when I'm recording and I'm talking to y'all. So yes, I hope y'all learned some helpful tips, and as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time.